we've had a, a bunch of conversations and debates and votes uh, on the Hill uh, in the last couple of weeks um, on uh, funding our domestic and international uh, vaccination and public health efforts. I wanted to ask you about that as it pertains to the theme of this hearing. We've talked a lot about the importance uh, of the United States competing, leading, winning the future. Um, my point of view, and I, I assume you would agree with this, is that the, the, the horrific catastrophe of this pandemic has also presented us uh, as the country that invented these vaccines and has the capacity to save hundreds of millions of lives around the world with a strategic opportunity that is unparalleled in, in, in our experience, maybe not since the end of, uh, of the Cold War have we had such an opportunity. Um, the President has said we should be the arsenal of vaccines. We've done a lot, um, but I'm not sure if we've done enough to be able to say we're seizing that opportunity. Indonesia, for example, we, um, 100 million Western vaccines, 35 million that we've donated, 200 million from China. Um, Bangladesh, 90 million Western vaccines, 158 million from China. In other countries, uh, the ratio is a little bit better. Um, in Vietnam, um, Turkey, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, about 194 million uh, uh, doses from the, the Western brands uh, donated uh, compared to 28 million from China, and yet still 194 million when you're thinking, when you think about the population of Africa is a drop in, uh, in the bucket. Um, USAID has asked us uh, for uh, about five uh, billion dollars. That request came in December. That was not to step up our efforts. That was just to maintain the current, I think, insufficient effort. And the Senate zeroed out that funding, um, which if we allow, if we allow that to stand, we're at basically no effort going forward this year. So I, I want to ask you about this from a strategic perspective. So set aside the obvious public health arguments for, for doing this. Can you talk a little bit about, in, in terms of our competition with China, um, some examples of when and how we have benefited from when we've been able to provide this sort of assistance, uh, and how you feel we as a country are constrained right now by the lack of resources? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for raising uh, this issue. The President, the Secretary, virtually all of you have been clear that nobody is safe from COVID until everybody is safe. We have seen that time and time again with variants from other countries making, it way, making its way to our shores and having another surge. Without additional funding to support getting shots into arms around the world, we will have to cut short our efforts to turn vaccines into vaccinations as you've noted, we've already donated over 500 million doses free of cost with no strings attached, which is quite different from what the PRC has done. Uh, we have done so to more than 110 countries and economies around the world, sole purpose to save lives. But by June of this year, we, estimated, we estimate that we will have obligated the majority of funds under the Initiative for Global Vaccine Access, Global Vax, that means we will have to begin to ramp down the initiative. By August or September, without additional funding, all of our related global VAX efforts will end. Without additional funds, the administration would be unable to extend surge support to 20 plus additional under-vaccinated countries that will need intensive support this year to get shots in arms. This will devastate our ability to ensure those countries can effectively deploy safe and effective vaccines we will also be unable to provide life-saving supplies, tests, therapeutics, oxygen, you go on and on, leaving large unvaccinated populations worldwide will increase the risk of new deadly variants emerging that could evade our current vaccines and treatments. And I think everybody probably saw in the morning paper the discussion going on among scientists and medical researchers about how to make sure vaccines can work for all of the variants that are coming our way I and will be sustainable over time. Stop you with a very quick question. Yeah. And where will those countries turn? Uh, those countries will turn to the PRC. Thank you. Um, and I think that's, that's the key point here. Again, the public health argument should be obvious enough. But 
like, how can we, and all of us, I think, agree on, on this aspect? Like, how can we voluntarily lose this competition to the Chinese Communist Party? I can't, I can't imagine it. Very, very quickly, very different issue. Does the administration um, intend to fill the position of North Korea human rights envoy? Yes. Thank you.